7. Episode 7, that is. We're sort of at a standstill now, though, huh? Yeah. What do we do next? Go to 7th Heaven? Drink a gallon of 7-Up and then puke our brains out? Nah. We already talked about Heaven in Ep 6. And we were on soda during most of Ep 4. Fun times, for sure, but carbonation makes us gassy. It makes me fussy. (laughs) Well, yes. The gas, which is essentially air pressure in the abdomen, makes you quite fussy. I try to swallow less air when I eat or drink to prevent the issue from arising. But I don't want to talk about gas so much. It's a well-worn topic that comedy podcasts often quite effectively cover. It's suitable for the medium because audio engineers can add relevant sound effects to get the message across. As gentlemen, it's a taste for us to delve into this well-worn and, dare I say, nasty topic. We get it. Gas erupts. Fuck it. Let's move on. Exactly. But yeah, there's not much that I can think of that's, that's worth covering for this episode. I mean, in, in previous episodes, we've, we've already discussed illegal poaching, long-distance relationships, uh, Bill Maher, and all sorts of other shenanigans. There's not much left, and unless we want to get technical. Well, let's just start the episode anyway, and we can go off our feelings. Yeah. I guess whatever strikes us as the cool thing to say at the time will probably end up being lit for the episode. Well, if we want to get our minds moving, we can always get drunk. Uh, (laughs) Are you drinking something right now? A bottle of water. Oh, cool. What what kind? Sparklets. You know sparklets. It's delicious. I know of it. I've seen the trucks from sparklets sparkling on the road. Sometimes a, a glint of sun reflecting off the, the glitter momentarily stuns me with blindness while I'm doing some maneuver. Same, but I don't mind because sparklets taste so delectable. Sparklets water falls from the sky in seemingly special clouds. What are some of the advantages of drinking these bottles of sparklets? The advantages of drinking these bottles are increased mineral intake for drinkers residing at home, work, or play. Plus, Sparklets has been around for 95 years. I think they know what they're doing at this point. Well, at least when it comes to water. By the way, I I apologize to anyone outside the southwestern United States, as my Sparklets references may fly over your head. I respect your choice to drink these bottles, yet I prefer to get my water from faucets or spouts nationwide. These permanent fixtures have been installed by extremely talented technicians for a reason. All you need to do is pull the handle and a stream of gushing liquid inevitably comes flying out. Sometimes you don't even need to pull the handle. The designs vary considerably. (laughs) I like those faucets in certain restaurants or hotels where the water cascades down different levels before reaching my hands. Shit like that amuses me. And of course it's great for washing hands, but tap water is just plain nasty. The people in the bottle factories end up using some sort of cool system that takes out any of the harsh elements. It's decidedly not nasty. Odd tasting water does not necessarily mean that it is unhealthy or contaminated. The taste may be a result of chlorination or the mineral content in the water. Fact, bottled water is not safer than tap water. Jay, did did you know that tap water is tested more frequently than bottled water? No. I thought not. In fact, in the United States, our drinking water is continuously monitored and treated according to federal standards. If local tap water is unsafe, then water companies are 
actually obligated under federal law to notify the public. But bottled water is excellent for on-the-go living. I mean, it, it spells convenience. It can be easily stored, taste dope, and it's accessible to everyone and their Aunt Sally. Hmm. Well, you and your aunt may be obtaining a lot of water using this method, but you're pouring something else straight down the drain. Money. Well, uh, you know, Matthew, um, when does it rain money? Like, seriously, when does it rain money? I'm not sure. When does it rain money? When there is change in the weather. <laughs> okay. Okay, wait. Do you, do you mean like the crap found under my couch cushions or the crap Obama promised? I I ask because I'm something of a policy wonk. A bit of both, I suppose. I mean, the joke can be interpreted on so many levels. It's a bit like an elevator in that respect. I I don't even want to get into it. Fair enough. By the way, Jay, I- Are you even going to mention the elephant in the room? Huh? Elephant? It's a turn of phrase. Elephants in the room. You'll learn. You'll learn. It it, it basically means there's something we haven't said that needs to be addressed. Oh, oh, so you mean like burying the lead? Exactamundo, you old son of a bitch. Hey, how dare you speak of my mother in this way? But forget about that in this moment. What is this elephant or lead that you keep referring to? Buddy, 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 buddy. Son of a bitch is just another expression. No harm meant, and I actually enjoy interacting with your mother. By the way, in in case she's listening, hi, Mrs. Weingarten. You're embarrassing me, Matthew. (laughs) Whatever. Blood is just rushing into your cheeks for a certain period of time. It's going to pass, my friend. But anyways, the elephant and the lead is that there's going to be a legit movie of ours on Eternal Family in a matter of days. Nope, not weeks, not months, days. Yep. The film is called Spin with an exclamation point at the end. Which doesn't give you an excuse to shout it, in, especially in, in closed space. Just say it at a reasonable volume and get on with it. But, like, yeah, just a side note, I don't know if this exclamation point is going to have an impact on our film's searchability. Honestly, we may have shot ourselves in the foot here. In which case, like, just fuck me. <laughs> we just got to live with it, you know? But, yeah, I'm sure we'll grow from it. Mm. I mean, while Googling something has entered the dictionary, and our little title may not be the most quote unquote Googleable, <laughs> saying that out loud <laughs> always makes me laugh a little bit. Seriously. <laughs> it's, it's still, however, a, an effective title for marketing purposes. It's succinct, it's, it's only five characters long, uh, and it has that, a, a bit of that silly Billy feel to it forcing viewers to smile and likely even remember simpler times. Yeah, simpler times. Like, yeah, we started this project during much simpler times, like before Donald Trump became president. I mean, 2016. I can picture it now. Harriet Tubman improved the $20 bill big time. Pokemon Go briefly took over everyone's social life. Harambe somehow became a thing. The mannequin challenge became normalized. Adam Curtis documentary, hypernormalization, swept the nation. Yeah. Isn't that back when we were busting our asses in LA? Like, we were hitting the stage 20 to 25 times a week. Just improving and workshopping, too. Oh, yeah. Wasn't that also the year I hit up your sister's B-Day party? She and a group of her close friends were camping in Malibu Creek State Park. And she was hospitable enough to let me join the quote-unquote crew. I had fleas at the time, by the way, so hopefully I didn't transmit that to her homies. 
Homies tend to be pretty understanding about that sort of thing. Pubic lice, on the other hand. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I remember how I reacted to my really close friend who had crabs. I quipped, I'm still down to go out to dinner with you. As long as we're not having crab ragu. <laughs> <laughs> but, by the way, remember when you said that turn of phrase, elephant in the room? It got me thinking, uh, hey, what if elephants had hair? <laughs> yeah, like, okay, elephants suddenly have a patch of hair on their heads. <laughs> <laughs> like, imagine the unique styles they might have, okay? Like, I don't know, uh, French braids or the Afro, like the Rachel from Fred's. Like, oh, the creativity of these elephants might astound us. Yeah, and they would easily pull off even the most old-fashioned hairstyles because elephants never forget, you know? <laughs> so so these, these old styles, they wouldn't seem so far-fetched in their community. <laughs> I mean, yeah, it would, it would seem like part of the zeitgeist somehow. Oh like God. something even as out of date as the bowl cut or the Rachel would seem just lit and totally contemporary for them. Yes. <laughs> 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 like, uh, of course, elephants would be afraid of their fleas. <laughs> not because, like, you know, not because of what, what would, would tr- find traditionally fearful in fleas, <laughs> like, <laughs> itchiness, but, you know, rather because elephants don't like small things. <laughs> right. Yeah. Going to the barber would be quite an ordeal. <laughs> they need ladders just to reach the elephant's big dome. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, elephants would get bored when they're bar. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, when the barbers. Yeah. <laughs> and the elephants would get bored when their barbers were at work. Like, okay. <laughs> they, they need magazines to keep their minds active. Like, okay, I was just throwing this out there Peanuts Weekly or <laughs> Remembering Shit Monthly, <laughs> whatever else they read. Yeah, but good luck turning the pages of the magazines with those big old trunks. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, like, what are trunks anyway? It's like an arm or <laughs> something. <laughs> yeah, uh, trunks. Trunks are like if you crossed an arm with a nose. Uh, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> like, imagine. Okay. Uh, just imagine having to reach for the salt and pepper shakers with your nose. <laughs> uh, gesundheit, or <laughs> what is that? What, it, was that a bit? <laughs> a bit of both, to be honest. <laughs> but that's my life. I'm sure, it's kind of fucked up, but it's memorable. And in a way, I'm playing the role of the clown. <laughs> I mean, Clowns and elephants are sort of colleagues in circus settings. By the way, that whole thing we just did, you know, about the elephants, that's going in the pod. Well, obviously, we don't cut anything out of this podcast. Like, even if I were to talk about my ex right now, which I'm not, but yeah, if I did, we'd keep it in. Knowing our fucked up brains... We'd make the section louder. <laughs> Do you remember that time you needlessly brought up your ex in our Q&A video? That was seriously so awkward. You probably did that, like, hoping she'd somehow see it and, I don't know, hit you up or something. Nah, nah. Exes are exes for a reason. Shit didn't work out, but the sex is pretty lit. Or, or was pretty lit. Dude, this, this is seriously awkward. Um, yeah. Hey, Mary, um, if you're listening to this, sorry, Matthew's so weird. I mean, I mean, you knew this already because you dated him, but honestly, he's actually a pretty good and well-rounded guy nowadays who's not only interested in physical lust. Whatever. I'm actually in a relationship and very happy right now. And my ex and I are friends. I always stay friends with my exes and there should be no major issues with this. That's awesome. 
Well, what else is floating your proverbial boat nowadays? Jay, enough with the pleasantries. Let's just get on to it. Oh, so you mean I should introduce Donnie Devanian? I can't see a good reason not to. He was down to be a guest on this episode. I like Donnie, and I'm excited to introduce him as a guest. Likewise. Well, shall we reel him in? He's biting! This one's a doozy! Damn! Damn this! He's a fighter! He's big! I like Donnie. I enjoy Donnie. Good evening, Donnie. Oh, um, well, it's not evening in the slightest. Yeah, where were you going with that, Matthew? I was just trying to use some dry humor. Hope that doesn't present too much of a problem. Good afternoon, Donnie. How's that? Okay, well, well dry, dry humor is like well and good, but still just no. Like, it's not evening. I just woke up, I brushed my teeth, I, I walked the dog. Made the bed, snuck in a little me time, loosened my muscles with a foam roller. Ate a well-balanced breakfast, you know, which can be fast and easy. Uh, I read the funnies in the Times. <laughs> I crossed off yesterday from the uh, calendar. Drank tea because I'm not a fan of water and coffee right now. And I also reviewed my previous day's spending. Oh, by the way, not only is tea healthy, but recent studies show it might even boost your creativity. Hmm. In, in my defense, though, even though it's not evening... There is a case to be made for doing these activities during or around dusk. You'd have to be as out of touch as Dennis the Menace to deny that breakfast is better at night. Oh, yeah. Breakfast at night. Do you, um, do you remember that time at the diner? Like, I think it was like me, you, Donnie, and like just a whole slew of hilarious comics. And... Yeah, no, honestly, we were losing our shit. Like, I, yeah, no, that was definitely one of the best nights of my life. But unfortunately, I don't see myself recreating that experience for myself. Can you two fools, like, grab the ketchup bottles and pretend they were mics? Oh, my God. I remember you guys both made outrageous toast to the group. Everyone was, like, reeling with laughter. Yup. And Donnie, you were swearing like a sailor to the waiter. Because you are influenced by Lenny Bruce. Yeah. Yeah. Remember you even dropped that F-bomb when you were discussing the inheritance tax with me? Oh, I, I don't exactly remember that. Well, what was the context again? You said fuck while proving a point in your argument about how, you know, class A beneficiaries are filing the form L8 to secure the release of bank accounts and, you know. On brokerage accounts. Sounds like me, yeah. We'd all had one too many drinks that night. I remember we even passed a kid on the street who turned to us asking, why are you guys walking funny? We were drunk. That's all, kid. That's all. Yep. You have to be drunk to eat the crap they serve at late night diners. Late night diners are like, kind of like stepping onto a battlefield. But instead of bullets, you get bacon. OMG, I fucking love bacon. Ugh, 
Oh my God, just saying that right now. Bacon tastes like what would happen if you watched Eternal Sunshine of the Spotless Mind while getting a massage, you know? That stuff is somehow better than sex. I mean, at least half the time, I think. Just to be clear for our listeners, bacon is salt-cured pork. It often is cut from the pig's belly, but more often, it is sliced from the back. So... Bacon is a piece of the pig's back? That's the part of a person's body I always pat when they're having a hard day. It's ironic that patting that area can be reassuring, and yet it's also good for recipes that can be enjoyed just as well at night as in the AM. Especially amongst hilarious comics and bookers. All right, so let's just step off memory lane for a minute here. Tell us, Donnie, what's really been going on? Like, really, like, really, really going on? Yeah, like, I'm, I'm doing this podcast right now with no caffeine in my system. Like, zilch. So, please, Donnie, spill the tea, why don't you? Well, my cousin threw shade at a wedding recently. Oh, no. Your cousin threw shade at a wedding? Yep, recently. We were at the post-wedding banquet. It was was like that awkward period where conversation is sort of dimmed down because people were focusing on their dish. It was a stoner wedding, so a lot of people were really freaking hungry. And they felt like there were vacuum cleaners in their stomachs sucking away at the sides. And after a while, it just became a sensation, and they couldn't even distinguish whether it was a pain or a pleasure. It was just sort of unnamed. I mean, that's how hungry they were. Holy. And you're telling us your cousin threw shade right then and there, when everyone was high and had their mouths full? Why, why didn't she at least wait until everyone had stopped peeking? Had I been there... I would have done a spit take, knowing me. I kept the food in. Uh, When she threw the shade, I think I basically just tried to keep calm and not show a major reaction. So I could do this thing where I I made my face into a kind of rigid mask, and I I just didn't move a muscle. Obviously, it's not like socially acceptable behavior at a wedding. But So some of the relatives started showing signs of distress. They weren't used to seeing me like this, you know, and some of them are a bit older, so they're already dealing with certain audiovisual li- limitations. Yeah, no, I, I'm so sorry to hear that, Donnie. Now, when your cousin threw the shade, what was your kind of gut reaction? You know, what would you have said if you were injected with some sort of truth serum and you could have said anything under the sun? I think I would have insulted her in a pretty cutting way. And because we're cousins, I'm quite familiar with her parents. I'm pretty well versed in how they like, programmed her. And I definitely could have used that to my advantage. But the thing is, it's not really my style. You know, she threw the shade and that's that. I just wish people never threw shade ever. How do you wish people communicated? Like, like, okay, if you were master of the universe... Well, number one, folks will speak with a pleasant tone in their voice. Nothing harsh or grating will fly here, okay? Number two, folks will implement active listening skills. So even if you're only using grunts to indicate that they're hearing what the speaker is saying, um, obviously grunts are just the bare minimum. I mean, you could use expressions like, "Uh uh-huh, and, oh, right, 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 totally. Number three, don't be scared by silence. A quiet interlude in an otherwise lively conversation doesn't necessarily mean the dialogue is doomed. Number four, don't always be the hero of your own story. However, the story should have a hero. Number five, stay on top of the news. Some events from the national or local news can be present interesting tidbits. That sounds easy enough. Should we try it? Sure, I'm, I'm happy to try this style of conversation. As am I. Donnie, have you read anything interesting in the news? Yes, Matthew, I have. I read something interesting in the news. Oh. Donnie, if 
you're comfortable, would you tell us what you read? Of course, Jay. It's a story about a small child who fell down into a well. Help! Oh no! What? Was the baby harmed? Is everything okay? Yeah. <laughs> I'll tell you. Just listen closely. Okay. Okay. But hold on. Just one second. Let me jog my memory for a second. Thanks for waiting. Baby Jessica fell into a well in her aunt's backyard in Midland, Texas. Rescuers worked for 56 hours to free her from the 8-inch well, kissing 22 feet below the ground. Whoa! Thanks for letting us know about that, Donnie. Mm -hmm. Now, was the rescue of baby Jessica a challenging ordeal, or was it relatively smooth sailing? Oh, it's a great question. It was a whole thing. Within hours of beginning the emergency procedure, the Midland Fire and the police departments devised a plan that involved drilling a shaft parallel to the well and then drilling a tunnel at a right angle across to it. Oh. So enlist- yeah. Enlisting the help of a variety of local and often at work oil drillers, the Midland officials had hoped to free baby Jesus in minutes. Oh. However, the first workers to arrive on the scene found their tools barely adequate to penetrate the hard rock around the well. Yeah, it took about six hours to drill the shaft and longer to drill the tunnel because the jackhammers were used designed for drilling downwards rather than sideways, you know? Mm-hmm. A mining engineer arrived mm. to help supervise, not only supervise, but coordinate the rescue effort. TV viewers were reassured when they heard baby Jessica singing Winnie the Pooh from deep in the well. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. As long as she was still singing, they knew she was alive. I love that system. Yes. When baby Jessica was rescued, Robert O'Donnell was ultimately able to inch his way into the tunnel and wrestle her from the confines of the well, handing her to Steve Forbes, you know, who carried her up to safety, and then to Bill Queen, who carried her to the waiting ambulance. <laughs> they emerged from the ordeal as fucking legends. Uh, wow. Well, three cheers for Robert O'Donnell, Steve Forbes, and Bill Queen. Those three were jolly good fellows. Those three were jolly good fellows. Those three were jolly good fellows. Which nobody could deny. Least of all, baby Jessica. Ah, uh, that conversation was amazing. Damn, I'm bummed I'm not the master of the universe who could enforce such pleasantries. Well, the least we can do is strive to keep things civil amongst ourselves. I'm sure we can lead by example. One act of kindness begets another, or so they say. Yes, as podcast hosts, this is particularly relevant to us. Since the medium we're dealing with is conversation. Speaking of conversation... I worry I don't bring much to the table here just because like, it strikes me that I may be kind of a redundant guest after you've already had a television comedy star on your podcast in the last episode. No, 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 no. And, and no, Donnie, you're totally different from Patricia Richardson. Your appearance, the way you carry yourself mm-hmm. and your unique history and posture. These factors all coalesce to create a very unique impression. Yes. And I met Patricia in 2017, and I met you in, I don't know, maybe 2012. So how could I possibly meet the same person in both 2017 and 2012? It's a logical fallacy and a contradiction in terms. Unless you think miracles were at play here? (laughs) <laughs> All right, you win. It wasn't a miracle. I am a completely different person from Patricia Richardson, from my face to my hair, from down to my ankles to the way I carry myself. All in all, I give the sense of a completely different person, I admit. It's almost uncounty, uncounty, I say, how it is similar from Patricia I end up being. So do you feel a bit better now? Yeah, I feel much, much better. Thank you, Matt. You're welcome. By the way, 
I wanted to say that I enjoyed meeting you in 2012. Seeing you around town always made me feel better, and I'm thankful for all the time that we've spent together. It's cool that we can get some semblance of your physical form through the TBS app nowadays. Of course, I'm talking about Dress Up Gang, a show that is extremely pleasant to watch. The Dress Up Gang is set in a surreal version of Los Angeles. Donnie and Corey are roommates who look out for each other. Donnie, me, a responsible adult with the temperament and outlook of a child, relies on guidance and life advice from Corey, the dad-like 30-something who has been crashing on his couch for quite some time. And of course, there's Frankie Quinones and Rob Boardman, who directs it. Plus a whole slew of other, frankly, gifted and talented folks, whether through nature or nurture. <laughs> Honestly, it doesn't even really matter. The product speaks for itself. How did you make Dress Up Gang anyway? I did it by enjoying making it. You know, enjoying it is the most important thing when creating a project. The key is to enter a flow state that goes beyond thinking, way beyond. It's almost like brilliantly surfing a wave of energy. And one of the neat things is that the byproduct is occasionally a pretty funny show, sometimes on TBS. So, uh, anything to plug, Donnie? (laughs) Um, (laughs) Just kidding. (laughs) You already plugged your show. Dress up, gang is available on the TVS app and VOD. By the way, I cannot, I just want to say, how insane is it that you're on the same network as Conan? Like, okay, it's just spitballing here, but I think Conan should have you on as a guest, okay? And like, just let you be principal for the day. <sighs> I mean, really, Donnie, you're the new likable, youthful guy. And, uh, of course, after you appear as a guest numerous times and testing your mettle and the quickness of your funny bone, Conan should pass the proverbial torch. I wouldn't say no. Conan O'Brien was a, it was a major influence on me at one point, though I've tried to like stick to my own path in recent months. But like taking his throne would be a nice way for things to just come full circle. First thing I do is fire his drummer, Max Weinberg. And suffice it to say, I'm going to be making a lot of changes around here. Brutal. But decently fair. Decently fair. Hey, maybe you could hire us. (laughs) Like, even if it's just performing heavy cleaning duties and notifying management of need for repairs in designated building areas. Like, we don't need to start in the writer's room or anything. Not at all. Just being on or near the set would be a great way for us to make valuable contacts and eventually get a so-called leg up in in this pretty complex field. Man, fuck this field. Huh? Plastic houses and plastic lives. You know, it's like, I say this thing, it's like TV entertainment where nose jobs are more common than just good sense. (laughs) If I see one more loser in a Starbucks writing his so-called genius pilot, I'm going to barf in my mouth a little bit. And then, go postal. And I mean it this time. You always say you mean it, but you never do it. By the way, Matthew, just never do it. I don't want you shooting anyone at all. Like water guns, whatever, that's fine. Low pressure hoses, okay. But as for real firearms, N-O spells no. Fine. I'll just puke in my mouth a little bit and call it a night. I mean, not all those books are bad. You know, sometimes it actually works out just fine. You know, I wrote a decent part of the dress-up game pilot in a coffee bean and tea leaf. And a decent amount of the associated sketches in a Pete's. I mean, it's a great spot to meet up with collaborators rehydrate and get a little caffeine and and there's even like a nice outdoor patio to take my sig break there's absolutely nothing wrong with writing in a coffee shop it's truly just up to the individual's preferences and they have the right to do what they want with their consciousness 
including the placement of their body. Well, obviously, as long as they're a free tax paying citizen. Oh, uh, that, that reminds me, I, I got to go run and do my taxes right now. I know the deadline's been extended, but it's just, I don't know about you guys, but it gives me a peace of mind to just get them out of the way. Yeah, no problem. No problem at all. I, I too, have a, a hell of a lot going on right now. Hmm. I mean, I, I, I've got to balance my accounts and, and put things in their proper places. Plus, I have like five chapters to cram and an essay due the following morning. I must tackle the most important jobs first. Never wasting a moment on trivial tasks. You see, I use software to organize my day's tasks, and I do this by ordering it in level of urgency, length of task, and there's this kind of neat labeling feature that lets you sort of sort the tasks by category. This is unbelievably helpful. Mm. It's freeware, right? I remember you telling me about this in early 2019. Yep. That seems worth checking out, but I think I'd have to clear some space on my hard drive first. But I'll definitely hit you up about that down the line. Well, it's been great bullshit with you guys today. You know, hope we can you know do this again sometime on mic or off. Yep. Let's let's definitely chillax on the flip side sometime when we're all free. You were very funny, by the way, on this episode. I think it's going to do pretty well. Well, obviously, we don't have access to the metrics or anything like that, like as I'm saying this, but once Matthew and I get into, (laughs) okay, we have this weird routine where basically we just dim the lights and we turn on a humidifier and yeah, we end up checking our analytics and I can safely say, Donnie, that your episode is going to be a hit. And the numbers will be in the thousands. And let me just say, and I often say this, numbers don't lie. Oh, thank you so much. And speaking of numbers, my uh, cursor is actually hovering up over the TurboTax app right now. And my trigger finger is getting antsy. I, I want to let you get into your routine and get comfortable. You love getting things done. and been wanting to do this a long time so just fire up the app let's do this people you got this donnie but hit us up if you have any questions we're only a swipe of the thumb away all right i'm off you guys have a good one take care take care donnie bye bye donnie bye take care take care donnie bye Bye, Donnie. Bye. Bye. Take care. Take care, Donnie. Bye, Bye. Bye. Donnie. Bye. Take care. Take care, Donnie. Take care. Take care.